Who would win in a fight? Now, if that's not the most popular question asked around Project Freelancer, I don't know what is. Oh, no, wait. It'd probably be, hey, where do these AI keep coming from? Or have you noticed that we're looking pretty evil lately? Anyway, there's been plenty of action-packed punch-outs and kick-ass karate matches over the years, but we never really saw a matchup between two of our heaviest hitters, Carolina and the Meta. Let's see if we can do something. wonder who'd win in a fight between Carolina and the Meta? No. Only hopeless nerds on the internet care about that kind of crap. Uh, yeah? Why do you think I'm asking you? Come on, picture it. It'd be totally badass. Well, yeah, I guess. Carolina would definitely win, though. Bullshit. You're just picking her because you're scared of girls. Meta's way scarier. He threw a warthog at me. Oh, I didn't realize scariness was the deciding factor in a fight to the fucking death. Genius. Hey, Rags! What are you talking about? Oh, Griffith just asking what would happen if Carolina and Meta fought. By who? One another. Another who? What? What? Just ignore it. Oh, you be death battle. I mean, sure. Oh, awesome! Hang on, I know some smart people that can help. Be right back! Do you have any idea what he's talking about? No, but I do know that you're still fucking wrong. Okay, I'm back. That was fast. Yep, I call Command and Nate that two of their best scientists fighting people to help us. Their best. Really. And that's how you write your name in Bookshut. All right, all right, enough screwing around. We've got a job to do. Oh, fine. I think you're forgetting that Command's best is just a step up from incompetent. They sent us a donut. I rest my case. Introducing... Jeez, and Boomstick! It's Wiz and Boomstick. Wow, those are the dumbest names I've ever heard. Franklin Delano Donut. And I retract my previous statement. Yeah, well, you've got the dumbest face I've ever seen. Uh, I thought you were supposed to be smart. I'm wearing a helmet. Oh my god, me too! All right, so how you guys do this? You just, like, draw names out of a hat? Cast some chicken bones around? It's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Why did you say it like that? Just... just watch. Before there was Red versus Blue, there was Project Freelancer. The Freelancers were highly trained soldiers with experimental weaponry and a mission so secret, not even they knew what it was. Kinda stupid in hindsight, but these were true soldiers. The biggest and strongest of them all was Agent Maine. Maine was the muscle of the team, relying on his brute strength, wrestling styles, and his unwavering ferocity to intimidate and crush his foes. While he likes carrying an M6G Magnum pistol into battle, he really likes a certain alien grenade launcher he stole, the Type 25 Grenade Launcher, AKA the Brute Shot. I mean, seriously, look at this thing. It's got a blade and can fire up to four rounds in three seconds. Let's test that, shall we? Hey, that's mine! Give it back! Ah! Ah! <sighs> well, in conclusion, I love this thing. So the guy was a badass fighter. Too bad Project Freelancer ended up turning him into a monster. Long story short, the director of Project Freelancer received a rare artificial intelligence for testing. The director imagined an army of super soldiers paired with AIs, but he could only get the one. Being the resourceful scientist he was, the director decided to torture the AI, forcing it to separate its raw emotions into multiple personalities to save itself. These personalities were captured as individual AI fragments and paired with different freelancers. Trust me, that's science. Maine was given Sigma, the AI fragment representing ambition and creativity. And apparently being creative means you're fucking evil. Desperate to gather his fellow AI fragments and reform into a perfect AI, Sigma manipulated and brainwashed Maine, turning him into the murdering psychopath known as the Meta. The Meta went on a rampage, betraying his fellow freelancers and stealing their AIs. He was like the Predator, but bigger, meaner, and with tons of overpowered equipment. His domed energy shield creates a nigh-impregnable force field. 
It can block bullets, explosions, and even shells from tanks. Allow us to demonstrate. Here's Griff inside an energy shield. Yeah, so? And here's a tank operated by Caboose. And what could go wrong? Oh, shit. Fire in the hole, eight one. Phew. Let's try that again, Blue Buddy. Yes, sir, Captain Deadpad. Huh? Wait, it ran out of... Ah! Now, if the energy shield had been there, Griff would have been fine. Wow. Science is fun. I've said it for years. As if that weren't enough, the meta's active camouflage turns him practically invisible. His strength boost enhancement grants him, well, super strength. And most impressively, his temporal distortion device can slow time to a crawl. He can turn invisible and stop time? This guy sounds unstoppable! Unfortunately, running so much equipment alongside so many AI fragments consumes a lot of power. But that hasn't stopped him from killing several freelancers and stealing seven other AIs. Not to mention, the dude can take a hit and keep on going, even when that hit is taking nine shots point blank to the neck. Man, and I thought my voice made my throat hurt. No wonder he never talks. The only thing that could stop him was when a couple of idiots stabbed him in the chest, tied him to a car, and threw that car off a cliff into the freezing ocean. But let's be fair, Wiz. That's a pretty fucking hardcore way to go. Hey, wait a minute. Where'd you get all this footage? Have you been spying on us? Don't worry about it. Leading the troops of Project Freelancer, Agent Carolina was supposedly the best of the best. She commanded the team through many successful missions, mastered several martial arts, and her top spot on the leaderboard seemed untouchable. Until a mysterious stranger showed up out of the blue and ruined everything. But we'll get to that later. Carolina carries a wider variety of weapons than most freelancers. Over the course of her career, she's favored the standard Magnum pistol, dual plasma rifles, a grappling hook which can operate in outer space, a humbler stun device which is basically a shock baton, and a long-range BR-55 battle rifle. It's not as flashy as a shotgun, but it's got an impressive range of over 3,000 feet. Ow! Why me? It just feels right. Like many other freelancers, Carolina also possesses an AI companion. Several, actually, but for this matchup, we'll be focusing on the time she spent with Epsilon, the memory of the original Alpha AI the director fragmented. It's also known as Church. Like the other AI fragments, Epsilon experiences time 205 times slower than a human being, and therefore drastically speeds up Carolina's thoughts and reaction time. Too bad he's kind of an asshole. And by kind of, I mean that's basically his thing. Guys? I'm an asshole. In her post-freelancer career, Carolina made it her mission to track down as much experimental armor equipment as possible. And let me tell you, she did a pretty damn good job. Like Maine, she managed to acquire the domed energy shield, but also picked up adaptive camouflage, a speed boost, and a healing unit. Unfortunately, just one AI fragment isn't enough to run all of this equipment at once. In battle, if Carolina's not careful, she can accidentally push Epsilon too far and essentially short-circuit him. Yeah, for a leader, she's kind of hot-headed and super competitive. Like when Agent Texas joined the Freelancer crew and started showing her up, Carolina started making a lot of stupid mistakes. There's a lot going on here. Turns out the director was Carolina's father all along and Tex was actually the AI fragment memory of his deceased wife. Meaning Carolina's greatest rival for her father's approval was actually her own mother. Wait, what? You're making that up. You guys didn't know that? Where have you been? Pay attention. Uh, yeah, seriously guys, it's like super obvious. Huh, suddenly everything makes a lot more sense. Fuck, dude. Remember when all we used to do was stand around and talk? Yeah, good times. Good times. Ow! <laughs> Still love this thing. Regardless, Carolina is one tough woman. She's defeated several other freelancers, saved an entire planet from civil war, and once blocked the shockwave of a nuclear explosion. She and Epsilon were even skilled enough to track down dear old dad after he went into hiding just to help him kill himself. Jeez, that got dark real fast. Oh. I'm your true warrior. 
All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a death battle! Seconds too slow. Looks like I'm picking the movie tonight. Ugh. Can it not be another garbage action movie? Oh, come on. They're hilarious. Everyone talks in one-liners and the plot's non-existent. It's like the characters are just there to beat the shit out of each other. Uh-oh. What is it? Uh, I think we're about to have company. Name? Not exactly. Okay, if we win, you can totally pick the movie. Fine. Not working! I can see that! Carolina's mastery of martial arts let her hold her own, and her use of equipment allowed her to match and even counter the metas. 
Loki may have gained an upper hand with his temporal distortion, but Carolina's healing unit quickly repaired damage done during the attack. Even though the meta had all that powerful equipment, it drained his suit's energy way too fast. Carolina tried to use all of her equipment at once and failed. Luckily, she had Epsilon to change tactics and focus on recovery. Which brings us to what is perhaps the most important factor of the fight, the relationship between Freelancer and Artificial Intelligence. The meta was brainwashed and manipulated by eight different AI, effectively filling his head with an unintelligible mess of voices and commands. In contrast, Carolina and Epsilon worked together as partners with a mutual trust, both capable of making judgment calls to make up for each other's weaknesses. Whatever, I still say it should have been the meta. Says the guy who can't tell the difference between a car and a puma. I can tell the difference! It was a matter of comparison! The meta just couldn't get ahead of his competition. The winner is Agent Carolina. Hey, what in Sam hell are you boys doing in here? Fraternizing with the Blue Devil and a... Who the hell are these dirtbags? Whoa, easy there, sir. We're just here from command. Hey, nice shotgun. I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> well, what do you know? Someone who has an eye for the finer things in life. Oh, you better believe it. You know, you remind me of someone. Almost like the son that I never wanted. Oh, that's funny. I was about to say you're like the peppy I never had. When I was a kid, he ran out on us to join the army and never came back. Huh. Well, how about that? Time to move along, I guess. Nothing to see here. Doop, doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. What a nice guy! We had an absolute blast working on the episode. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the full series of Red vs. Blue on RoosterTeeth.com. If you enjoyed this episode, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And follow us on social media so you're up to date on the latest death battle details. Just follow the links in the description. Thanks for watching. Next time on Death Metal. Targets acquired. You and me, right now. <laughs>